but I have been buying things. I did sell some stuff, obviously, to make up the money. Uh, this 62H, the Canstool belled one, has been sold, just got shipped off today. And I bought some stuff. So let's talk about it. This is the most interesting thing and will be very last in tonight's program. Let's go over the other stuff. Uh, I traded a guy in a Lessy 3 for a New York 3.5. This is the two um, versions deeper than the three and I've owned one of these and I've owned an Alessi 3.5 and now I'm owning one again I don't know I keep coming back and uh, I've played like five notes on it and it felt pretty good so I'm probably going to use that for the near future on of course large tenor trombone next up a Bach 50 everybody's favorite including my favorite strangely enough um, another Bach 50 this is one that I've already owned the buyers thank you um, whoever that is in the comments who reminded me what I used to call this, because I totally forgot. This used to be a 50B3OG with the original valves, and it was kind of cool. It had a cool sound, a uh, very trashed slide, if I remember correctly, and uh, it was like just impossible to play. It was so hard to play, and if you played it loud, the sound would disappear. It was kind of crazy. It was kind of cool how bad it was. Um, in that regard. And so I luckily stumbled on these Shires rotors, which are semi-clapped out, but I actually play pretty well. And it made this horn into like a real contender. It's one of the best sounding Bach 50s I've ever owned. But it's a little quirky. And um, during the pandemic, there's a point where I was just kind of not happy with my playing, not happy with this. And I traded it for another Bach 50. That got moved a couple times. And the owner right before me had it cut, or cut it himself actually, probably, um, to fit Shire's fittings. Um, successfully or no, that has been done. It now has a Shire's Q reverse tuning slide. So the uh, everything's been reversed now, which is neat. I do like that. And uh, now it has a paddle on the second valve, which I never had. I just had the raw stock. It still has the rubber band to return the second valve because the spring is not strong enough. This is a pretty janky instrument, but one of the best sounding 50s I've ever had. I, I just want to reiterate, I'm not making that up. This thing sounds so cool. And honestly, I think it plays pretty well too. I might have some work done, kind of clean things up, maybe see if we can make it a little more efficient, a little more easy to play. Um, and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this because I don't really need it. It is a nice backup. But I already have a pretty good backup in my Yamaha. So, I don't know. I just wanted to have it back. I wanted to see what my thoughts were the second time around. And they're pretty uh, pretty positive. I'm going to give this a shot at some point. Probably Disney. Um, that's the most boring instrument. Second most boring instrument. Or no, no, no. Least boring instrument. We're getting more interesting here. Is, <laughs> you guessed it, another Bach 50. I got two in the mail today. At the same time from the same UPS truck. This is a 50T3, but it is not a stock 50T3. This is one that someone converted many moons ago um, from a corporation horn. So yes, you get another one of these. I've probably owned at least 10 uh, corporation 50s at this point. This probably was from a kit. I don't actually know much of the specifics. I know it was worked on by Rob Stewart, who did some of the lever work. Um, I just cleaned the valves and they feel pretty good. Second valve likes to hang just a little bit on activation, but it feels pretty good right now. Um, it's got the bell tab attachments here, no uh, edge bracing like they have on modern instruments, even though there is edge bracing on the bottom. And this thing plays and sounds great. Do I need two axial 50s with corporation bells and yellow brass? No, I don't, but I have friends who might, so I really got it for them to try. And if I can't sell it to them, I can sell it to the wider world at large. What's really neat is this came with a 50 slide. This is my Shire slide, of course. It came with a 50 slide 
that actually plays well. It might be one of the first ones I've ever had where I was like, oh, I actually kind of like playing this. I do not find Bach 50 slides to play well for me almost ever. And that's why I have two Edwards dual bores and a, Shire, a Shires dual bore because I just cannot get along with Bach 50 slides. But the one that came with this bell section is actually pretty good. So we'll see what happens with that as well. This is not the most interesting thing, but it is another Bach 50 up last and by far the most interesting is a tenor trombone. So a student of mine saw this on eBay being sold by Quinn and he was like, hey, should I buy this as a large tenor? And I was like, no, don't buy this. It's obviously an unfinished project. It's missing some parts. Um, and I just kind of left it at that. And then later I went back and was like, what is that? And mainly I bought it because it has a stainless steel uh, Thayer valve, which I like. I've owned them in the past. And I, you know, for very cheap, it's kind of worth buying an entire instrument just for the valve. Might have noticed some other things about this instrument though. So let's start at the most boring side, the bell. Um, the bell, I think, is, well, I know it's unmarked, but I think it may be a Blessing B78 bell, which is the 525 Blessing of yore. They used to make those in the past. Red brass, 8 inches, and roughly 88H sized through the rest of the bell. It's got an 80H style tuning slide. But the tuning slide is a little less span. It's like quarter inch smaller this way than an 88H slide would be. So very close. The tubes are the same size. I've swapped it out with my Holton TR-158. And it fits, but you can't swap the tuning slide because they're different spans. It's got this uh, stainless steel Thayer on it, which I like. Obviously does not have any levers or linkage or anything. So it can't be used as is, but it's actually in pretty good shape. It's got this neat wrap. It's got reverse uh, tuning slide on the F attachment wrap, which is not common until basically now. You can find that on uh, Edwards and stuff. And then we get to the slide. Now, in the pictures on the ad, you actually couldn't tell. It looked like the slide was just unfinished. It had two different outer tubes. Okay, it's an unfinished slide that just happens to fit with this bell. Whatever, I'll just like throw it all away. It doesn't really matter. No, actually, it turns out this is a finished working slide um, made out of a Yamaha 500 bore upper, probably from a uh, 354, the student horn, or maybe the dual bore, like 456 or 356, whatever it is. Um, that's a 500 bore upper, some crook, I don't know what the crook is, and then a 547 lower tube. Now, this is where things get really, really weird. This is a reverse slide. So you'll notice the, the brace here does not touch this tube. And you might go, well, yeah, it's just not finished. There's no socket there. But no, this tube doesn't move. This slide moves independently of that. If you look at this end, the what usually is the, uh, well, it is still the inner slide. It's usually attached to the other side. It's actually right there. This is a complete reversed slide. There have been reverse slides. This is very hard to hold because of how it's built. There have been reverse si slides in the past. There's like a patent for it and stuff. There's all these fancy ways. Usually people will put, um, instead of it just being free floating like this, they'll have like a little socket with like a little hand area where you can hold it and it'll float over this bottom tube, which like I said, does not move. The slide does not move. Only the top tube does. So you have a little tube down there. On this one, it's just left free floating. This isn't even finished. It's just unsoldered. And luckily, that's kind of how I play anyway. I just hold it right here. And so I can play it. I'm just blown away because in the pictures, you could not tell that this was a reverse slide. I did not know about that. I probably would have bought it like I would have tried to buy it even more if I had known. But it's actually in great shape. It's got like a ding on the uh, on the lower outer, which is the one that doesn't move. It's got a ding here, and it's not like the best action in the world. Of course, it's really hard to keep an outer slide in alignment when half of it's here and half of it's here. Um, so the whole thing kind of uh, warps and bends. You can see it moves a lot because the crook is the only thing holding it together. 
It's just mind blowing that this exists and is playable. I thought it was just going to be like this Project Horn that would just like have holes in it and not work. But it plays, and it actually plays pretty well with this really drastic dual bore, 500, 547. About as big as you can be with a, a tenor trombone. And it really works well. I've just been playing with my, my small shank 3G, and it just is really good. Now, the coolest part, apart from the reverse slide, of course, is that I think the lower uh, cork barrel here is from a Bach or something very similar because it's actually a Bach tenon. So I can play this with like my Bach or Shire slides and I can use this on my 42T. So I can go the other way around. I've actually done it a little bit and it sounded really cool. This is like the coolest thing I've ever bought and it was so cheap and I just literally bought it on a whim because it has this Thayer valve. And it turns out to be like one of the coolest horns <laughs> I've ever found. We'll have to see what I do with this. Um, there are some errors in the build. Um, I mean, this, this slide's not quite finished. Maybe there should be something here so it's a little more user-friendly. There's obviously no lever and no linkage on the valve. It turns out that the set screw for the valve is broken off in the, uh, in the spindle here. So I would have to get, like, tapped out and you get a new one and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be kind of annoying at some point. And the bell brace is a little bit too far forward to actually put a lever in and have it work. It could possibly be done, but basically the bell brace just needs to be scooted whoop, this way until it's like here-ish. And then the whole thing would probably be the kind of the right geometry. Um, do I want to make that happen? I kind of. It's really cool. Like, why would I not want to do that? Um, but yes, very cool instrument. I don't know if I'll be able to play this with real people yet. I was actually just tuning myself and it's a little bit too long. So if I want to use this with other people at some point, you know, just in this configuration, I gotta have the tuning slide tubes cut just a little bit. But yes, three horns, mouthpiece came in today. One of the coolest horns I've ever gotten. A couple more bases that, you know, bases come and go. They're always <laughs> coming in and out. But the coolest tenor trim one I've ever had. Hopefully that's interesting to you as well. And uh, see you all in the next video. Bye.